Yeah, hello, my name is Dr. Eric Hollander and I'm at the Spectrum Neuroscience and Treatment Institute in New York City. Uh, today we're going to be talking about transcranial magnetic stimulation or TMS. I have two experts in this area, Dr. Tariq Pereira from Contemporary Care and uh, Dr. Stefano Palanti from the University of Florence. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Pereira, I'll start with you. Why don't you tell us what TMS or transcranial magnetic stimulation is? So, TMS or transcranial magnetic stimulation, in, in my opinion, is a paradigm shift in how we treat conditions of the brain, whether it's neurological or psychiatric conditions. For example, for the last uh, you know 50 to 60 years, or basically forever, we we were treating brain conditions, but we never fully understood what we were treating or where to treat. So a lot of our treatments, like medications or even electroshock therapy, are very non-specific. They treat the whole brain, and in the case of medications, it affects the whole body as well. But over the last 10 to 15 years, we've begun to recognize the circuits involved in depression and other psychiatric conditions through a lot of research, uh, functional brain imaging, which can tell us which parts of the brain gets activated when, based on what we are doing. And parallel with that uh, is the discovery of this device called TMS that allows us to very focally either treat or either stimulate or suppress parts of the brain. So, uh, so really, it's the, the, this treatment is in coming together of our understanding of the circuits involved in the brain and the ability to treat it in a very focused way. So what TMS really involves is providing a very focused magnetic pulse or magnetic field that can either activate uh, brain neurons in a very specific part of the brain or suppress overactive brain neurons in a specific part of the brain. And so what we have now, uh, for example, I will talk a little bit about how we treat depression for instance. With depression, what we find is that uh, the left front part of the brain, uh, the left uh, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, an area that is important for us to enjoy, for enjoyment and taking pleasure, seems to be underactive. And so the core symptom of depression is this inability to enjoy things and, and take pleasure, and then other areas connected to it also start malfunctioning, and we have the whole syndrome of depression. What TMS does is you basically place a coil over your head and it provides this magnetic pulse that goes specifically to that area and it activates that area. And so if you keep activating a specific part of the brain, eventually the brain learns that behavior and can, can self-sustain that activity. So as a result, TMS is a very focused treatment. It requires, you know, usually the treatment lasts about 30 minutes if it's for depression. Uh, we typically treat five days a week for, uh, for about four to six weeks until somebody gets completely better. It's very non-invasive and uh, easily uh, treatable. Uh, now, because it's a scientifically based focused treatment, it, in the studies it seems to be more effective uh, than medication. So virtually all the studies have been done in people who failed antidepressants. You tend to have a great efficacy. It also gets people better in between four to six weeks, which is a very short time period, considering that a lot of these people have been depressed for decades. So it works a lot faster. It's also a lot safer, in fact, because you're only stimulating a specific part of the brain and not putting anything in your body. You don't have the same side effects and problems you might have with medications, nor is it invasive like something like electroshock therapy. And even people, uh, children, and even pregnant women have been treated with TMS. Uh, without any uh, uh, problems, and it's been studied uh, and may appear to be one of the safest treatments we have. Okay, well let me stop you now and then ask uh, Dr. Palanti a little bit. So, you're a neurophysiologist and a psychiatrist and you work uh, in Florence, Italy. Uh, so is transcranial magnetic stimulation something that's uh, used in Europe? And uh, what kind of conditions uh, do you use transcranial magnetic stimulation to treat? Uh, as a neurophysiologist, we have been used uh, to, TMS, to magnetic stimulation as a diagnostic tool for a long while. So we have been quite familiar because you can trace, uh, you know, all the brain and, and you can trace uh, how the, uh, the nervous system functioning uh, to magnetic stimulation. 
And only in the last 15 years uh, we start to be really interested in treating disorders. Uh, and we are uh, developing several centers in Italy, uh, academic centers for now mostly, that are involved in, in research in different fields and different conditions. I was listening to what Dr. Pereira <coughs> said, and I, I would like to add just uh, 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 one thing that, uh, uh, that is related to this shift paradigm, that is neuroplasticity. No? We change our mind about uh, this disorder that are not anymore just receptorial disorder. We know the circuitry, but we know also that uh, anxiety as well as uh, depression, uh, the, the true matter is that there is something that is getting involved with the neuroplasticity. And through TMS, we can stimulate and modulate the plasticity of the brain. That is a very important thing. So uh, this has been proved first probably in pain condition, and that makes sense. And also uh, then in, in, in depression and in OCD, uh, we have uh, several uh, line of study in OCD. Mm -hmm. I think that in depression, there are some specific population, like, uh, for instance, uh, postpartum depression, where the mother wants to breastfeeding, keep breastfeeding, or uh, depression with diabetes. Uh, we have some experience in depression with Parkinson, because uh, uh, what is very uh, safe in this treatment that has no metabolic effect, has, has not any extrapyramidal effect. Uh, you can find even sometimes with antidepressant. So, mm -hmm. so it's, a, it's a very interesting very, and very safe. And the la last things that has been not mentioned that we treat uh, our patient. We don't, you, you don't need uh, to admit to this patient to the hospital because it, and also after each session, uh, I would say as a side effect, you have some kind of cognitive improvement. Even if when you have not yet the improvement in, in the symptoms of the depression, you can still have some improvement in spatial memory or verbal memory. So it's, it's, it's very it's very different from any kind of other treatment for these conditions. Right. Well, it, it does seem that our understanding of uh, psychiatric disorders is really changing these days, and uh, we we think of these as brain-based disorders with impairment in the underlying neurocircuitry. So if we can identify the circuits that are associated with different disorders, whether it's a depressive disorder or whether it's obsessive compulsive disorder, then we can uh, intervene and change the activity of those circuits uh, with treatments like transcranial magnetic stimulation. Now, my understanding is that there's uh, more than one type of transcranial magnetic stimulation. There's the uh, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, and then another uh, approach also using a, a different shaped coil in order to get a deep transcranial magnetic stimulation. Uh, so I understand that there's more than one device that's been approved for the treatment of depression and other clinical trials that are going on. Do you want to uh, add a little bit to that in terms of other conditions that uh, are currently being studied in the treatment of uh, TMS? Absolutely. Uh, before I go to that, if I may, I just want to add a little bit of what Dr. Polandi said. And sure. I fully agree that this is, you know, uh, we are beginning to understand that the brain is very plastic and we are using the neuroplasticity to our advantage. So TMS, in essence, activates and creates new connections in, brain, in the brain in a way that we only begin to understand. And so the benefits appear to be a lot more durable. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the website should have uh, the paper, the Janisak paper, which looked at relapse rates after TMS, and the relapse rates back in depression after people got better were only 11% in six months. In similar studies done with the STAR-D trial with antidepressants, if you have failed a couple of antidepressants and then ultimately remitted and gotten better with antidepressant, your relapse rates are going to be around 60 to 70 percent, and with ECT it could be as high as 90 percent. So because we are really making new therapeutic neuroplastic changes, the benefits for durable TMS seems to be a lot more durable and sustained. Now the question of the different conditions we can treat, like I mentioned uh, earlier, this is, a, this is not just an antidepressant. This is a whole new way of approaching the brain that's different from anti, uh, uh, drugs. So basically any psychiatric or neurological condition that we've been able to treat with medications, we may be able to treat with TMS. Currently the FDA approval is for the treatment of depression, but there are a lot of uh, studies, very good studies showing it can read, uh, read, uh, treat a whole lot of conditions. Uh, so the anxiety conditions are one of them, generalized anxiety, OCD, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, 
for example, uh, at Walter Reed Hospital, um, where the soldiers coming back from the war, one of the first line of treatments for them for PTSD has been TMS, which has significantly reduced suicide rates. As Dr. Pallotti mentioned, it's also a potentially a very good treatment for chronic pain because the brain sends down descending pathways that can block pain activation in the large uh, spinal fibers of the brain. So fibromyalgia or whatever condition that is along your torso or migraine, TMS has shown potential. And another family of disorders where there's increasing evidence is the neuro neurological degenerative disorders such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, where there is going to be some potential in treating TMS. And uh, as Dr. Hollander mentioned, there are many different devices. We are working with what we would consider the first generation device. As these devices become more advanced, uh, our options are going to be greater. Currently, we have the neuronetics device with TMS, which can provide TMS at the surface. And then there's the brain's way, which recently got FDA approved, that can provide TMS to deeper structures of the brain. And then I think Dr. Pallanti can speak to us. There's a MaxTim device, which has a different shape in the call that may allow for the treatment of things like OCD. Right, so I guess we've been hearing that our understanding of psychiatric disorders has been uh, changing over time. We have a DSM-5 that's about to come out now, which really uh, is sort of a new development in terms of our classification system. But we also think of things like uh, what are called the research domain criteria, where we start to think of uh, domains of psychopathology that may cut across different conditions and that may more closely map onto the underlying brain circuitry. So you want to say something about using uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation to treat uh, the brain circuits that are associated with different domains of functioning? Yeah, as, as an example, we have uh, one of the other uh, circuit that has been uh, treated with uh, TMS now is uh, that one that is uh, involving craving, uh, especially trying to, to improve the capacity of the frontal lobe to control the craving for the food as, as well as cocaine or nicotine. So uh, different disorder like uh, uh, smoking addiction or cocaine addiction or eating disorder can be treated uh, through the same uh, paradigm. And that is just to, to make an example. Then uh, other uh, possibility to, to use a TMS uh, uh, based on, on the uh, hypothesis of the circuit involved uh, is uh, uh, hallucination, chronic hallucination in, uh, in uh, schizophrenia, but in any uh, psychotic condition. Mm -hmm. And this also reveals uh, some, uh, some mechanism underpinning the hallucination. So but what is in interesting that while you are treating this disorder, you uh, discover uh, or you have a better understanding of a, of a circuit that are uh, underpinning the disorder itself. So it's right. Now you both mentioned the role of neuroplasticity and the idea that competitive transcranial magnetic stimulation can enhance plasticity and by enhancing plasticity you might get long-lasting changes in terms of brain circuitry and activity. Uh, are there thoughts in terms of uh, pairing TMS as a modality to enhance plasticity with other uh, sort of techniques that may enhance uh, learning or memory or the development of new skills? Uh, yes, that's a very interesting question. Uh, and that's something that we are interested in in some way uh, because what TMS does in some ways is it creates the opportunity to learn new skills, but what those skills actually are may have to do with how we use the brain. A good example is that there's a study going on as we speak, uh, again, in an age-sponsored study, treating stroke. So when there is a stroke, especially a small stroke, the brain tries to repair it by creating new neurons around the lesion but those new neurons are too few in number to have any significance functionally, and because we don't use that region, those, uh, those cells are lost. Now what they're doing is, with, for like, uh, TBIs or minor strokes, what they do is they would provide TMS to activate brain connections and brain cells in that region, and combine that with physical therapy that specifically targets that region. So if I had a stroke that made my arm paralyzed, uh, I would give TMS for the area control down and force the patient to use that hand. That, uh, act, 
will activate those neurons and prevent them from dying out and rescue them. So TMS has the potential to treat specific parts of the brain if you combine it with the right kind of therapy that activate those regions of the brain that have been treated. Mm -hmm. Do you want to add something about combining different modalities to enhance uh, plasticity? Yeah, in, uh, right now we have uh, about to publish a case series of OCD patient, resistant OCD patient, where we uh, combine TMS in the immunosal suppressor area uh, to a CBT treatment. Uh, so you use TMS as an augmentation treatment for CBT, and uh, apparently it seems that it works better than CBT alone. So mm -hmm. I think that uh, this part can be adopted also for other uh, conditions, either in, in the spectrum of OCD, but also in other kind of insights. Nice. Well, so it sounds like this is really an exciting area of clinical treatment and research, the idea of using uh, electromagnetic uh, pulses uh, or transcranial magnetic stimulation, which was initially used to study brain function, to now become a new treatment modality and to get more localized effects to uh, increase or decrease specific brain circuits that are associated with uh, modulating symptoms in a number of different uh, conditions. And now the idea is to enhance things like plasticity or learning and memory that could have uh, long-term effects. We've heard about both the uh, neuronetics type of transcranial magnetic stimulation and also the uh, new brainsway type of transcranial magnetic stimulation. Uh, so this is Dr. Eric Hollander at the Spectrum Neuroscience and Treatment Institute, and it's been a great pleasure to have Dr. Uh, Tariq Pereira from Contemporary Care and Dr. Stefano Palanti from the University of Florence to just touch a little bit on some of the exciting developments in TMS as it relates to psychiatry. Thanks very much for being here. Thank you.